Hi, today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about HCP Packer. But before we jump right into what HCP is, I think it's important to take a step back and talk about what is Packer and how that gets used before we get right into HCP. So if you're not familiar with Packer, very similar to a tool like Terraform, the goal of Packer is how do we take an infrastructure as code approach to building and maintaining our production artifacts that we run. So this starts with what we call a Packer file. And the idea of the Packer file is that what we're doing is we're codifying all of the inputs to building a production-worthy artifact image. This might include source code. It could include configuration management. So we might be using tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible. And then we might be baking in additional sets of security or compliance controls. So we have security and compliance controls. So all of these form the inputs and we specify as part of our Packer file how those should be used to build a production worthy artifact. Now that gets fed into Packer and then Packer is able to execute that codified definition to create multiple output images. So we might create, for example, an AMI image for our Amazon environment. We might create a VMware image for an on-premise environment. We might create a Docker container, right, to run on a container platform, etc. So Packer can generate multiple types of machine and artifacts like containers for all of the different platforms we're on. So much like Terraform, this allows us to create an infrastructure as code pipeline where we have a consistent way of building these images in a multi-cloud or hybrid cloud way. Now the challenge is how do we manage all of these images? This is really where HCP Packer comes in. Today we might be generating a set of Amazon machine images and then those get pushed into the AWS catalog and we can go search and look for our different AMIs. Our VMware images, we might be saving the actual underlying image in a system like Artifactory. Our containers might go into you know, either the Docker registry or some other form of a Docker registry. But the challenge becomes how do you manage all the metadata across all this? Ultimately what we want to be able to do is say, hey, what's the latest version of this artifact? In this case, let's say this pipeline that we're building happens to be for, let's say, you know, a hardened base OS, right? So we're creating our base operating system in a hardened way. Where HCP Packer comes in is at the end of this pipeline, all of these outputs, this metadata, gets published into the Packer registry. And this is cloud hosted as part of the HashiCorp cloud platform. So we can create a registry and then we publish to this and say, okay, great, this is our base OS as an example. This might be version one of that based on all of the sort of configuration we have. And then great, we have an instance of that for various environments, right? We have an AWS image in this case, we have a VMware image, you know, so on and so forth, right? So for each of these images, they'll get uploaded under a single image name. In this case, we'll call it base OS. That thing will have a version number, right? So in this case, we've published only the first version of this image. And then there might be a version of that artifact unique to each environment. Our Amazon image will look slightly different than Azure or slightly different than Google. And what this now enables is that we can query this via an API and say, great, give me the latest version of my base OS for AWS in this case. In which case, what we're gonna get back is a particular AMI ID, right? AMI one, two, three, let's just say, right? And so you can start to see how this can be fed in via an API to many different downstream systems like Terraform, right? You might consume this as part of your, you know, an Ansible script. You might consume it as part of a different Packer run. So why would you consume it as part of a different Packer run? Well, in this example, what we did is we created a hardened base operating system, right? But in practice, we might actually have additional types of software we want to layer on top of that. Great, we have our base OS image, but I also want an image, let's say, to deploy my production MySQL, right, or my web application. So I might have a separate pipeline that I define. Let's just say in this case, I have my Packer file again. But now, this is based for my web application A, right? Web application A obviously has its own inputs, right? Has its own source code, has its own config management. But now, instead of starting from scratch, we might want to start by using the base OS as the underlying starting point. 
So we actually say, great, I want to source from that Packer registry. So I'm going to read from HCP Packer my base OS, and I want to build it off of the latest version. So now when we execute this Packer pipeline, right, we feed that into Packer, it's going to go and read through that API and say, great, give me the latest version, in this case version 1 of my base OS. I'm going to use that as the starting point upon which I'm going to then build web application A. That's then going to emit a set of these images, right? So I might have an AMI once again and a virtual machine image and then a container. So I'm going to build all of these. But now these are the web app that we've built as opposed to the base image. And now we're going to do the same thing. We'll take these and we'll publish it to that same registry. We'll call this, you know, web app A. We've created version one, and now we have, you know, all of these versions, right? We have AWS, VMware, right, and container, let's say. Great. And so now this might be the actual thing that we want to deploy. So what we're not necessarily doing is deploying a base image. But now, coming in with Terraform, we can query for this thing and say, great, what I really want to do from Terraform's perspective is query for a data resource, right? So I'm going to define a data source that's going to come in and read, basically, from this. So I'll spare you the specific details. But within Terraform, we'll basically come and query and say, great, what I really want is image web A, right? And I want the latest tag of that. And so now when we run our Terraform code, and then great, we might pull that and say, I'm you know, defining a resource. In this case, let's just say it's the EC2 VM, right? And that thing might actually pull the AMI based on that data source, right? So now when we're describing our Terraform configuration, what we're just saying is, hey, give me the latest version of Web A's image. I want the AMI, obviously, because I'm deploying it to EC2 in this case. And now we don't have to worry about manually stringing along, hey, what's the AMI ID? Do I save that as a variable? Every time a new build takes place, how does that get published? And so now the power of chaining these all together, integrating Packer workflow with the registry into Terraform, starts to come when we think about version upgrades. So for example, now let's say there's a new version of our operating system because we want to apply a set of OS patches, right? Maybe we have a monthly rebuild of this hardened image. We can now re-execute this pipeline. That's then going to generate a new set of AMIs, you know, on-prem images, containers, etc. And what we'll publish now is a version 2 of that base image, right? That version 2 will have a different set of all of these identifiers because the AWS AMI will be different, so on and so forth. That then allows us to come and re-execute this pipeline in an automated way. So this Web A pipeline is now going to pick up the version 2 of that base image rather than the version 1. So we'll redeploy this and generate a set of version 2 images right, for our web application server. And now when we re-execute Terraform, the data source is going to pick up the newest image, and that will result in us deploying the new version of that application. Right? So this starts to give us an end-to-end -end flow in terms of how do we go from image building, versioning those things, multiple layers that might need to be built on top of one another, all the way through. Now a key property of this is that as part of the Packer registry, we'll maintain the metadata of what parent builds these were baked on. So we know the version two of this depended on and built on top of version two of the base OS image. So where does this start to come in handy is when we start to think about security remediation, right? For example, we might discover that not only did we build version two of our base OS image, but in fact, version one now has a known vulnerability. Right? And so great, we no longer want to deploy BaseOS version 1, and any image that was built on top of version 1, we also don't want to deploy. So this then allows us to get into a true security remediation workflow, where we can now come into the Packer registry and basically say, I want to revoke the ability to deploy version 1. Right? This thing is known bad, you should no longer be able to deploy it. So now what will happen is that will actually cascade. When we revoke this, we actually can tell that version one was actually built on top of version one. Version one of the web app was built on top of version one of the base operating system. And so this thing should also no longer be deployable. You're no longer allowed to do that. And so we can now chain this all the way through 
to Terraform environment where if someone had deployed and said, you know what, instead of latest, I want to pick up version one specifically, we can now chain that through and create a check, a policy guardrail within Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise that basically asserts, are you trying to deploy a version that has been revoked? And so now if a user tried to apply this Terraform configuration, they're actually gonna get an error message back that says you're trying to deploy version one, that one has been revoked, there's a security vulnerability that's known, right? And they might not even be deploying that new infrastructure. It might be that in the course of they're managing some other set of resources, they do a Terraform run, and now that picks up the fact that you have this image that's been revoked, and that thing is running in production. So this starts to give us that sort of end-to-end -end provenance where we can connect basically the underlying image to the actual application images that are being you know, built, all the way through to the infrastructure that's being deployed and managed. And so not only does it help us do an automated rebuild as we think about multiple versions and baking you know, upgrades and on top of those versions, but it gives us a workflow around how we want to manage security re you know, revocation particularly, and then how we enforce that all the way through to the infrastructure that's being defined. So we can start defining policy checks that restrict our ability to delete things or modify or deploy net new applications with revoked images. Right? So at a very high level, this hopefully gives a sense of HCP Packer it builds on top of the underlying Packer workflow, right, for building these sort of infrastructure as code images, and then layers in this additional metadata and registry to do this type of image management. Now, the final piece that we didn't talk about is you can also introduce a notion of release channels. So you might actually be able to say, great, I'm gonna create a pointer to you know, my V1. That might be my production stable image. V2 might be what I'm using in stage, right? And then as I deploy a V3, you know, maybe I have a dev channel as well. So this ability to then define channels lets you get a little bit more intelligent when we talk about sourcing those inputs from the Terraform side. So you might say, I want the latest version of the image, but I don't want the latest of any channel. I only want the latest for my production channel, right? So for production, I wanna to restrict to only prod, and then this gives you the ability to upgrade these over time. So you might say, great, we've hardened that, we've done enough testing of V2 in production. We know V2 is, or I'm sorry, in staging. We know V2 is ready to go. So now we can just flip that tag and say, great, the production channel now also deploys version two. So the next time we execute our Terraform now, it's gonna pick up the version two image as being the latest within the production channel. So the Packer registry is really designed to start giving us that kind of metadata around versioning, multiple different you know, release modes, right? If we have an AMI versus you know, a VMware image, those need to be used differently based on the environment we're in. And then release channels really give us that sophistication to be able to manage multiple environments and promoting from you know, development through to production. Hopefully this was a helpful overview of HCP Packer and gives you a sense of how it fits into really building and automating that image pipeline from sort of very inception all the way through to production environments. Thanks so much.